In Lesson 10, we're continuing on with configuring windows. We're going to talk about the control panel, display resolution, mouse settings, Windows Defender, virus scanning, firewall, Windows Update, desktop themes, screen savers, and lots more. Continuing on with configuring windows, again, one of the things that I don't like about Windows 8 is that Microsoft is trying to split between touch users on phones and tablets and computer PC users with uh, you know traditional desktop PCs or laptops. So you get this feeling like you're running two separate operating systems on your computer. And that feeling is reinforced with the different ways you can control the settings on the computer too. Now we just looked at the charms bar change PC settings. Well there's something else you can also access called the control panel. So exit out of here and hit escape. Come back to your Windows desktop. Now from the desktop, if you open up the charms bar and go to settings, you'll see this here too, but you'll also see control panel up here. Go to the control panel. Now, this is something you have to access from the Windows desktop. This is the traditional control panel that has been around for a while now, from since like Windows XP and before. Now, the different settings are grouped together into categories programs, hardware and sound, clock, and so on. But I prefer to see all the separate icons. So I'm going to drop this down here where it says view by category, change it to small icons. I like this better. I like to be able to see all the different options in front of me. Now we're not going to cover all of these today. Some of these are really advanced. But I am going to show you a couple things you should know. First on the list, date and time. Now we already kind of saw how to change date and time before. But this is another way you can come in here and adjust your date and time. All right, date and time. You can change the date and time here if that's not correct. You can change your time zone. And Windows will notify you when the clock changes. So when the daylight savings time does kick in, you'll get a little pop-up. Now right over here is a tab called Internet Time. It says the computer is set to automatically synchronize with time.windows.com. In other words, on a regular basis, your computer is going to synchronize its clock with an Internet-based time server. Now that's generally a good thing. That's how your cell phone, for example, keeps a, an exact time. If you don't want that, you can turn it off by clicking on Change Settings down here. All right, so that's date and time. Next on the list to look at, Display. Display options allow you to adjust the look and feel of your monitor, your screen. Now this first option here says Change the Size of All Items. You can make the actual objects on your screen larger. This is especially good if you have poor eyesight, but keep in mind if you increase this, some things might not fit on the screen if they've been designed for a certain resolution. So I like to leave mine at the default here. My other computer actually has three options here, small, medium, and large. You can change just the size of certain objects like the title bars or the menus or the palette titles, All right, if you want to come in here and play with that. You can also change your screen resolution. Now I'm in a remote session right now, so I can't change any of these settings. But down here is where you can change the resolution of your screen, the overall width and height. The higher the resolution that you pick, the more crisp everything looks, but everything gets smaller. So you can fit more on the screen, more icons, more objects, more windows, but everything gets smaller. Generally, you don't have to play with the setting, but I want to let people know that it's available. So if you want to come in here and play with it, feel free to. And if you're curious, there's some options down here, some different articles you can read, like what display settings should I choose. If you have a multiple monitor set up, you'll see multiple monitors listed here as well. Again, we'll talk about that in a future class. Now I'm going to come up here and hit the back button to go back to display. And then back again, that will bring me back to the control panel. The next item I want to take a look at are mouse settings. Mouse settings are something that a lot of people like to tweak because you can change things in here like your double click speed and that's how fast you have to click between button presses for it to register as a double click. You can make it slower or faster. If you find that it's too sensitive, you can slow it down, and if it's not sensitive enough for you, you can speed it up. Now you might see multiple devices in here. I'm using a laptop right now, so you can see I have a Synaptics touchpad, or I can drop this down and go to other pointing devices for the external mouse that I have plugged in. Now the main thing I wanted to show you in here was everyone always asks me, how do I flip the mouse buttons? Left-handed people like to have the left-handed button where the right click is actually the left click or vice versa. So you can change that here if you want to. You can also change your mouse pointers. If you're not happy with the default mouse, you can come down here and pick another scheme like uh, 
black extra large, for example. If you hit apply, it'll save that setting. I'm not going to. You can change the pointer options. You can make the mouse faster or slower, which makes it more or less sensitive as you're moving it around the screen. And there's different options on here, like show mouse pointer trails and such. You might even see a separate device settings. Now, this is specific for my Synaptics touchpad. So you might see some settings that are specific to whatever mouse or pointing device you have installed. All right, I'm going to come in here and hit cancel because I don't actually want to make those changes. I just want to show you where the mouse settings are. Down here toward the bottom, we've got some other options. User accounts, you can actually come in here and set up your user accounts. The other um, change PC settings screen that we were at earlier, that's actually easier to use than this one, so use the other one. Next is Windows Defender. All right, click on that. Now, Microsoft greatly enhanced Windows Defender for Windows 8. All right, it does a lot more to protect your computer against viruses, spyware, and all kinds of other bad stuff. Now, it stays on in the background constantly watching what you're doing. If you have a slower computer, this might slow your system down a little bit, but not much. Not much, because it's constantly scanning any files that change, looking for viruses, looking for bad things. When you download something off the Internet, it takes a look at it. Now, Windows Defender needs to be updated regularly. Normally, if you have Windows Update on, it will update itself automatically for you. As you can see, my definitions here updated just today, in fact. All right, you can perform a manual update if you want. If you want to make sure you have the most updated virus and spyware definitions. All right, you can take a look at the history of what it's done, your quarantined items, items that are you know, prevented from running but not removed from the PC. If it finds something that's suspicious but doesn't want to quite delete it, it'll move it to a quarantine folder where it can't do any harm. And there's different settings in here. You can turn off real-time protection if you want to. So it's not constantly running in the background, but you can still manually scan files if you want to. You can exclude certain file locations if you don't want, uh, let's say, your downloads folder getting scanned. All right, and there's some advanced options in here. But basically, I just wanted to show you where Windows Defender is and what it does. And one of the reasons I wanted to talk about it was because when you buy a new computer, a laptop or whatever, chances are your PC vendor has bundled some kind of third-party virus scanner on it whether it's uh, McAfee Virus Scan or Norton Antivirus, you don't need those anymore, okay? Yeah, they got some extra bells and whistles, but Microsoft's Windows Defender is 99% of everything that you need. And I've found those third-party virus scanners slow your computer down tremendously. The first thing I ever do when I see one of those third-party virus scanners on a client's machine is I remove it, if they've got Windows 8 and Windows Defender. Now, obviously, you have to be smart. Don't be downloading things left and right from questionable websites. There are some good websites out there. Downloading from mine, for example, you know my stuff is safe. Um, CNET is another great place. Download.com, they scan all their stuff as it comes in. Now, no virus scanner, whether it's Windows Defender or McAfee or any of those third-party ones, no virus scanner is perfect. All right, so you want to make sure you have a good backup of all of your data. You can't catch 100% of everything because the virus scanners are only as good as the viruses they're programmed to catch. But this is as good as you need. You don't need anything else. Okay. And one last thing is if you want to come in here, do a quick scan. You can pick quick, full, or custom and hit scan now. I do this if I download something questionable and I want to make sure the virus scanner has looked at it. You can do a custom or you can do a full and it checks everything. All right. So that's Windows Defender. You want to make sure this is on and running and that it's set to background scan. There's another thing here called Windows Firewall. Now, what is a firewall? Everyone always asks me this. Well, a firewall is essentially a piece of software that looks at all the traffic going into and out of your computer over the Internet or, or a private network. And essentially, if you've got like a web browser and the web browser goes out to the Internet and looks for some information, and it, it waits for that information to come back, the firewall generally says, okay, that's an outgoing connection. The user requested that information. I'm going to allow it. Okay? However, incoming connections, and it says right here, incoming connections block all connections to applications that are not on the list of allowed applications. If you're on the Internet and someone else, let's say you're at a cyber cafe, and someone else sees your computer on the network, they can try to attack it by sending it packets of information, scanning your open ports, all that stuff. And that's what a firewall does. Essentially, a firewall is like a traffic cop. It sits there on your network line, your internet connection, whatever, and it monitors the traffic going through. And it doesn't allow anybody in that's not supposed to be in. 
And you don't have to know a whole lot about what firewalls are and what they do. And in fact, I'll have a whole separate lesson on firewalls in the future. But for now, just make sure you see little green icons here that says your firewall is up and running and nothing can get in. And if you're not sure, come over here and hit Restore Defaults, and it'll set it back to the default settings. All right, you want to make sure your firewall is on. Not so much of a security problem if you're at home, especially if you have, like, a wireless router, because your router that connects you to the Internet at home generally also has a firewall in it to protect any traffic from coming in. You have to manually open up ports to allow stuff in. But if you're at a, you know, at the airport or at a cyber cafe or even at the office, you want to make sure your firewall is on because anybody else on your local network can then get into your computer. All right, so firewall is important. Don't turn it off unless you know what you're doing. And if you know what you're doing, you're probably not watching this class as far as firewalls are concerned. And the last thing I want to talk about here in the control panel is Windows Update. Now, we briefly talked about Windows Update earlier. And in the change PC settings screen, I turned on Windows Update. And here it says, restart your PC to finish installing updates. Your PC will automatically restart in two days if you don't restart now. Whether you like it or not, it's going to force an update to install those, those things that it downloaded. Now, generally, that's a good thing unless you're, you know, really busy and you don't have a minute to, to restart your computer. I like to do this myself manually. I don't like having updates automatically downloaded for me. So I'm going to come over here on the left and pick Change Settings. All right, here's the important updates option. I'm going to drop this box down. It says install updates automatically, recommended. No, nope, I don't want to do that. Download updates, but let me choose whether to install them. That's okay. It'll download them in the background, generally when you're not busy. All right, but I like this one. Check for updates, but let me choose whether to download and install them. All right, so it'll pop up a little message in your system tray and say, hey, I found some updates. You should install them, and it'll give you the option yes or no. And then, of course, there's never check for updates. But I'm going to pick this one. That's the one I like. All right? This says give me recommended updates the same way I receive important updates. Sometimes there's important updates and there's recommended updates. Important updates are things like security patches, you know, because there's always vulnerabilities found in Windows where hackers have figured out some way to break something. All right, those are important updates. But then there's recommended updates like, you know, video driver updates or, you know, fixes the programs that aren't critical, that kind of stuff. All right, so I'll come down to the bottom and click OK. You might see sometimes certain buttons have that little shield on it. That's just an extra level of Windows protection. That little shield means that you have to have administrator rights in order to do this feature. That's what that shield means. Like your guest account, that kids account we set up earlier, kids wouldn't be able to change this. They don't have administrator rights. Okay, your account, the, the first account that you set up on the machine, generally has administrator rights. All right, so I'll click OK. Okay, and it made the change, and notice how that message is gone. It's not going to automatically reboot me anymore unless I come in here and reboot it. Okay, which, again, is something that you should do like once a week or so just to make sure that everything's okay. Okay, so those are the big, most important things in the control panel that you should know about. All the rest of these things are optional. You don't have to change the stuff. You know, there's administrative tools and there's advanced stuff, BitLocker drive encryption, and we'll cover all of this in our future classes. Oh, and there's one more thing I wanted to show you. It's in the control panel under display, but I find it's easier to get to it from the Windows desktop. Right-click anywhere on your Windows desktop and come down to Personalize. That brings up the Personalization screen. Okay? And you can come in here and you can change your desktop icons. You can change your mouse pointers. All right, here's the different desktop icons. You can change what these look like, which ones you see on the desktop, whether you want to see a computer icon there, all right, or the user's files or the control panel, you can put all these icons on your desktop. And now when I hit OK, you can see those icons have been added. There's my user folder, there's a computer folder, right? There's the control panel. You can pick which ones appear on your desktop. Okay, you can change the mouse pointers in here. We did this before. But the big thing over here is this stuff. You can change the visuals on your computer. All right, now there's different themes you can pick from. There's Windows, there's Earth, and it changes the background, the backdrop. Right, there's high contrast colors down here. You can individually change your desktop background. All right, click on that. You can pick from solid colors. I have a black one right now just because it's easier for training to have a black background. But you can have wallpaper on here. All right, you can pick from the Windows desktop backgrounds. 
right, these different images that are in here. And you can see my background is changing, even though I don't want it to right now. I pick this green one, right? See, so it changes to that. If you hit select all, it picks all of them like it was a minute ago, and it will rotate. It'll change your background every 30 minutes or whatever you want, every two hours, every day. I have mine set to once a day, so it's different. You can pick from the pictures library, the stuff you've got in your library, which I definitely don't want that. Top rated photos. You can actually rate photos in your library. Solid colors. Computer. All right, I like the Windows desktop backgrounds myself. And again, you can browse and pick one that you want. Okay, I'm going to go to solid colors and go back to black, just because it's easier for training. All right, save changes. All right, you can change your sounds. You can set up a screensaver if you want. Now, screensavers back in the old days when with CRT monitors, you had to worry about something called screen burn-in, where the image would actually be left behind if the same thing sat on your screen too long. That's not so much a problem nowadays with, uh, with the new flat screen technology. But screensavers are great for security reasons. All right, you can put a screensaver on. You can pick from any of these different screensavers, like bubbles or whatever. And then it says, on resume, display a login screen. So this will wait one minute for there to be no activity. Right, if you don't touch anything, usually you want to set this to something reasonable like 30 minutes or 10 minutes. And then you can say, on resume, display a login screen. That way, if you get up to go to the bathroom or grab some coffee, and you're not back within 10 minutes, your screen locks itself. Okay, that's good if you're at the office and you want someone else messing around on your computer. All right, I'm going to turn that off, though. I'm going to cancel that because I don't want a screensaver on my training computer.